Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Biceps. Your bicep is actually composed of a short head, which gives a lot of the width of your bicep, and the long head, which gives you that peak on the top of your bicep. So if someone's flexing from behind, you actually just see the long head if there's a peak. I actually um, have more of the width going on in my arm. I've just currently started working more of the long head on my bicep. So I wanna give you some ways to work that peak part of your bicep as well as going over your initial form. Um, another thing to talk about with your bicep, there's this thing called your brachialis, maybe brachialis, however you pronounce it. It's actually this muscle that is under your bicep. So if you strengthen your brachialis, it's almost like a balloon that will push your bicep up higher. So if you neglect this brachialis, your bicep may be big, but it's gonna be small, down more versus if you lift the ground from beneath, it lifts your bicep. So it actually gives it this fuller look in your arm. They both work in elbow flexion, which is bending your elbow. So let's uh, get into the nitty gritty and uh, how to do bicep curls and things. So these are dumbbells. Um, again, the weight, we're not really going over that right now. I can get in the reps and sets and amounts later on. But for a generic bicep curl, we're gonna go over form. What you wanna do, Bring your arms slightly in front of you, so elbows don't have to be behind you, although there is a form and technique for that version of it. We're just gonna rest the weight on our thighs. Slight bend in your knees if you want. You don't wanna lock everything out so tight where you can't breathe, but you should have tension in your core. Your core engaged, so holding these weights, it doesn't swing your body. A lot of people at the gym, some common mistakes, they will kip the weight, or if you look at my shoulder, they'll move their whole shoulder and then swing which is not isolating your bicep. If you're trying to work hypertrophy in your bicep, you don't want anything else to move except your elbow joint. My elbow bringing my hand closer to my shoulder and back down. If I do this, or if I lean with it, or if I'm like this, I'm shortening the range and I'm not getting that full extension and flexion, going through that full range of motion to work my bicep as much as I could. So what you wanna do, again, from the front here, I like to externally rotate so I don't have my shoulders collapse inwards. And then on external rotation, my hand, my thumbs point slightly outward. I, you can either do one at a time. You come up, pause for a moment at the top and then control back down. Pause for a moment at the top, control back down. From the side, pause at the top, control back down. Pause at the top, control back down. Now you may realize if you're going in a controlled manner, and you're not cheating with your shoulder, you're gonna to have to go to a lighter weight. That's okay. The heavier weight wasn't because you were stronger in your bicep, it's because your shoulder or something else is doing the work for you. So if you really wanna work this muscle in isolation to get your arms popping, you need to work on that form. Again, you can see I'm engaging versus if I'm doing this, even though I can lift it easier, I'm using my back, I'm using momentum to lift the weight, which maybe in athletics, if you're using your body as a full chain or machine works, but to really grow that bicep, I'm cheating a lot of that range. So, now that we've gone over the form, again, shoulder width apart, whether you wanna do them at the same time or not is up to you. I wanna go over how to hit that brachialis muscle more, which is kinda of like we said, it's under your bicep and it'll help lift your bicep higher. This is actually hit a little bit easier if you do a hammer curl. So instead of having your wrist facing up, which is supination, this is pronation, we're just gonna have a neutral grip where we actually get a little bit more, more work out of our forearm as well, which is our brachial radialis, and then our brachialis again, which is under our bicep. We're still gonna hit the bicep a little bit too. So I mix it up between bicep curls and hammer curls. So again, if you're going individually from the front, I have my shoulders slightly back, um, just so we have some extension. I don't like to round in here personally. If I'm doing like a seated or a preacher curl, yeah, you will do some internal rotation, just the way you're supported on a bench. But standing again, use more core muscles to help you stay tight. Again, I lift that weight up and I bring it back down. I lift that weight up and I bring it back down. If you notice, again, I'm not swinging, I'm not arching. I am isolating using my elbow into flexion and extension, I'm trying to bring it all the way to my shoulder. Again, it stops because my bicep gets in the way. You can actually, from here, if you moved a little bit, see how I can lift a little bit higher, but I'm doing that control. I'm not swinging it to that position, not for this specific drill. You can work loaded negatives later in the future, which could be another video, but for now we're just going over ways to grow the biceps and the brachialis. Um, breaking it down, because I have a tendency to give too much information in one video and it gets way too confusing. 
So again, to go over bicep curls, again, whether you're using um, a barbell or two dumbbells at the same time or individually, squeeze for a moment at the top, bring it back down slow and controlled. If you're looking to build power, I actually tend to lift explosively on the way up, but then I pause at the top and then I do a controlled descent. I'm not going down like four seconds or anything. It's just first up, hold, slow down. But again, as I burst, I'm not trying to kip it. I'm trying to keep everything tight, just moving up the elbows, back down. Same for hammer curls. If I'm doing them at the same time, up and down, up and down. Another variation of the hammer curls I like to do is uh, cross body hammer curls. So instead of bringing the weight up, I'm actually gonna bring it to my chest or opposite shoulder. So if I'm moving with my left hand, again, trying to isolate my elbow, I'm not swinging it. I bend here and back down. You may have to move your shoulder slightly forward between reps so the weights don't hit each other. But here, one, and on the other side, one. Or if I'm just doing one side, I can kind of isolate my arm lean it against my hip and I'm not twisting my body. My hips stay neutral. I'm just bringing my arm across here, here. I'm turning just so you guys can see a bit better from this angle. Again, trying to isolate at the elbow joint. A lot of people um, slow their gains down by incorporating all these other muscles. I'm like, why is my bicep not getting bigger? But I'm getting stronger and lifting more weight. Chances are you're cheating the form and you're lifting more weight by using multiple muscles, which again, isn't necessarily wrong depending on your goals. But if you're looking for hypertrophy, which is growing an individual muscle, um, it's gonna have to do a lot with those isolation exercises. So again, those are with 20 pounds. If I wanna lift heavier, I mean, you wanna make sure you still have good form. So you don't wanna kip it. So if I'm gonna do cross body, I need to make sure that it's still within a weight that I can do without doing this kind of thing. Unless I'm doing that on purpose to then work the negative slower because we're actually about 30% stronger on the down phase than the up phase. So sometimes if I burn out and I can't lift anymore, I may purposely get that weight higher to then work the negative. So I get an extra burn if I don't have other weights to drop to. Um, the other thing, obviously, eventually your arms are gonna burn. You're not gonna be able to hold the weight anymore. But if you wanna work grip strength, try those hammer curls as well. Cause as I mentioned, they work your forearms a bit more versus when you do a bicep curl, the weight's kind of resting in your palm. Doesn't strain your forearms as much as if you turn it because now you have to support that weight from gravity acting down in your hand, which will cause them to burn more. But then I find that crosses over to life a little bit easier um, versus the other way only. So obviously there's a bunch of different workouts to do for your biceps. I also do a lot of pull-ups and chin-ups. But to be honest, I work my biceps usually four sets um, in a workout of eight to 12 reps, or maybe even six to 12 reps, depending on how heavy I'm going. And again, I like to go explosive on the way up. If it's heavy, it may not move explosively, but in my mind, I'm trying to will that weight up as fast as I can. But eventually as I get tired, it's not gonna move very fast. That's when I know I'm approaching muscle failure. And when I can't do it with good form anymore, I stop that set. I don't keep going, unless again, I'm working those force negatives. So if I'm curling this 40 pound weight here, I'm trying to move it fast. It's just not going fast because I'm tired and it's a heavier weight. So all weight is is really enhanced gravity. And as I get tired, you can tell I'm getting slower. You know, I'm getting to the point where I can't lift it anymore. So I know I'm done with that set with this particular weight. So I put it down and I rest. I do another workout and then I come back to it. I do four sets of that three days a week, taking a day off between so I train Monday, Wednesday, Fridays with weights. You don't want to do the same muscle group every single day. It's too much. Your body needs time to heal. So you can work more than four sets in a workout. If you do like a back day or a pulling day and a pushing day or an upper body, lower body. I personally always like to do full body days, just three days a week. And then the other days I do acrobatics and cardio. The reason being, I never have a day in life where it's like, oh, it's leg day, so I can't use my arms. You know, like, I don't know, with acrobatics and everything I do. I always use everything on some level, so isolating half of me just always feels weird. And then if you miss a day, you end up skipping two days for that technically by the time you come back to it. But you are welcome to do split routines if that works better for your training. But I think for uh, three days a week, I do all right. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. So that's a bit of the stuff you can do with biceps. Oh, I wanted to go over one more thing really quickly. I'm gonna go back to the 20 pounds. So we went over traditional bicep curls, hammer curls, cross body hammer curls. 
I also want to show you the Zop, I think it's pronounced Zopman curls. It's named after some person who did it. Anywho, what you do, you curl the weight up, but then you turn your wrists so they're facing the floor on the way down. So bicep curl traditionally, up, turn, work it down. Again, don't arch, try to keep your body still. Basically what this allows you to do on that down phase, you get to hit more of that short head of your bicep because it's like a reverse curl. So if I'm doing a reverse curl here, that's basically what you're doing in that Zotman curl. You're starting it like a normal curl, but then at the top you rotate your wrists, which is harder to do with this. And then you control on the way down. So just another way, you'll feel it more in your forearms. You'll feel it um, somewhat on in the inside of your bicep if you're doing it properly. Again, that short head of your bicep gives you more of that width. And then the long head gives you more of that peak of the mountain on your arm. And the brachialis lifts the whole thing up. So again, there's tons of more bicep exercises to do, but I hope that's something to get you started. It's really just going towards failure um, that will help get your muscles to grow. And then making sure your rest periods aren't too long between if you're looking for hypertrophy. You want longer rest intervals if you're building more power and strength, a little bit shorter if you're going the muscular endurance route or the hypertrophy route because you want to tax your body without letting it rest entirely between sets. If you have other questions about biceps or other muscle groups and things you want me to discuss, please comment below because I want to help you guys. And if you have more to add to it too, we're all continually learning. If you have some ideas you'd like to share, comment below. Um, thank you so much for watching the video and uh, putting the fun back in fitness or something, I don't know.